Thank you very much. So uh, I've been like properly introduced by Stephen. My name is Stefano. I work like a Kaspersky Lab a security researcher. This talk aims to be a bit more different than usual. I'm trying like uh, I will try to tell you about a possible detection technique uh, for keyloggers, which are the little tiny programs which steal the data. And keyloggers are being employed by ma many malware, many targeted attacks. So it might be interesting to understand what they are and if it's really possible like to fight back, right? So a bit of introduction. As I told you, I'm a security researcher at Kaspersky Lab. Uh, I got my PhD from the University of Amsterdam. And uh, this is about myself. Uh, and about this talk is you get like a really, really, really brief outline on what like the next slides are going to be about. So basically, I'm going to tell you more about APT, that buzzword that stands for Advanced Persistent Threat, a bit more about existing countermeasures, because like you know perfectly that companies and researchers have been trying like to address this specific problem. And I'm going to tell you like about, after this, about a, an unprivileged approach. Why is that important? Because most of the time when you use your laptop, you don't have enough rights, enough, uh, you don't have like super user rights. Most of the time, if you want to install like an application, you have to go to the IT department, right? And you have to ask, please, can you install like Skype? Can you install this? So uh, it's actually frustrating that malware such as like keyloggers do not need any approval for installation or for execution. And you as a user needs that. You need that like uh, to install Skype and other type of software. So what I've been trying to do is to look like for an approach which is suitable like for all of us without distinction. And after telling you about this approach, I'm going to sketch some limitations and conclusions. And uh, then like, I'm going to be here for questions, if you have any. So um, let me tell you about a couple of um, uh, events uh, um, about uh, keyloggers like in advanced persistent threats. So advanced persistent threats, we know perfectly what they are, but threats, threats targeted. They want to be aimed like, for something, they want to steal data and everything. And all these threats are using keyloggers. We had like, an, exa an example, a recent example, at uh, the beginning like, of 2012, which was employing like, Duku was the name of it. It was like, a really complex piece of software that was using keyloggers to steal user data like, from confidential, uh, from confidential like, assets in uh, high profile institutions, such as uh, research center, embassies, and everything. But like another example in 2013 with the Operation Red October, I've actually checked uh, uh, the manually the samples, and I can tell you that it's just crazy because you got like a huge, a complex, a really complex piece of piece of software, which could host like many plugins, and one of those was a keylogger. Why? Because again, stealing credentials and st stealing like user information is pivotal in the uh, malicious activity of uh, our adversaries. Would be nice to know who they are, but most of the time, as you know, attribution is something difficult, even nowadays. So, um, but it would be belittle, uh, I would belittle the concept of keyloggers if I were to say that uh, only APTs are employing them. Also, cybercrime, also all, my, all malware samples that are uh, perpetrating some uh, cybercrime uh, act are using like keyloggers. Why that? Because well, again, it's the simple, simplest soft form of software, but still users' data. So that's the reason why we have been seeing, and there is no mistake that we're going to see more and more and more in the next year. I mean, like right now, another topic uh, is like <coughs> governmental uh, malware. So um, malware used like by high-profile institutions, like to get uh, uh, to steal some information, and also that are employing keyloggers. But why are so many, really? Because they're easy. They're easy to create and they're easy like, to distribute. Keyloggers are one of the few classes of software that can be used like, on, without privileges. That means that, as I was telling you before, you can install it, you can execute it, and you don't need to be an administrator. You can do that like on Windows. You can do that like on Mac OS X. You can do that on Linux. So it's crazy. It's crazy. And why you can do that? Well, because as I told you, it's easy. Like, this is like you're not required to understand this, obviously. Like, but this is to show you that it's just 10 lines of code. I can have like, a software that is able like, to steal your information, which is like a, a news that is quite unsettling to me the first time that I noticed that. 
And why is that uh, so easy? Simply because um, there are many functions in existing operating systems that uh, are try that um, make available a lots of APIs, that means uh, uh, application programming interfaces, that allow like dev developers to use, um, for instance, uh, a special keyboard or to um, allow them to create like special software such as, I don't know if any of you use like those uh, note-taking software, you just use a combination like of keystrokes and bam, you get like a window where you can type like quick, uh, quick notes and everything. In order to do that, that program like must listen, not all your keystrokes, but some of them. So it's able like to react to if you press like a determined shortcut. So the thing is that all operating system designers tried, tried like to make all these tasks easy. And obviously like the drawback is that like it's also easy like for a malware developer to actually like use those for something which is not as legit as the program that allows you like to take notes while listening to a talk. So um, you might say, well, but did we discover this right now? No, no. I mean like many approaches are out there. The most, the easiest one, uh, the most, the, also the easiest like to comprehend is like the signature based one. And being from Kaspersky, you always, I guess that you know perfectly what I'm referring to an antivirus program with just like a database of signatures. And um, the ability to detect like loggers as, all, uh, as a lot of other malicious samples just because the signature corresponds to the malicious, to one that is in, one, uh, in our database of signatures. The problem is, is, you know perfectly that this approach cannot keep up, right? I mean, like this is a reactive approach. It would be nice to have like security solutions that are able to uh, to detect something even before the malicious mind conceives it. And uh, this is like what is called like behavioral behavioral like methods. And I guess that m many vendors like use like the same either the same concept or like a synonym for the very same thing. It would be really nice to detect something that is malicious just because it's malicious, <coughs> not because it resembles something else. To make like an analogy, just think about the flu. Most of the time we're stuck even now with vaccines about like a specific strain of the flu, right? It would be nice to address all flus, all flu viruses, all flu mutations, which is like incidentally more difficult and we're still struggling in that. There are other approaches, some more from the academic world, which is tent analysis, which is like a nice approach to deal with, like with uh, um, threats that try to steal data. The main concept is like, if I know what my data, uh, what is the sensitive data that I want to protect, I can just like follow where this data is going, like inside the system. And as soon as this data goes out, like for instance, through the network card, I can just like tell the user, hey, there's something happening. But these approaches are really into research. I mean, like, they're still being researched, uh, they are prone to false positives, so I'm not gonna talk about those. We can actually, like, rely on API tracing, which means, like, well, if you're using, like, the API, the one that I showed you before, that means that you're doing something bad. Where, as I told you, there are many software classes which actually use this API or this functionalities in a legitimate way. And this functionality being the ability, like, to see what the user is typing. The same example that I was telling you before was the note-taking application that pops up if you press, I don't know, Alt F12. That's like a legit use of something that potentially can be used by a malware to um, key log the user's activity. So the problem is, it looks like that is like an uneven battle, right? I used this analogy, David and Goliath. I mean, it looks like we, are no, we have no hope because we have like a malware developers that can install everywhere, that can disseminate their samples without any problem. And we can't counter that. We can't actually go everywhere and install like an antivirus suite. We can't go uh, everywhere and just check all the system because most of the time you have to be an administrator. And instead it would be really nice to be able like, to take care of it by yourself. To ac ac at, least, at least check if a laptop is compromised. How many times did you, for instance, use a laptop of a friend of yours or a laptop at the university to just, uh, I don't know, check your mail. I mean, like to, to me, it happened too many times. And thinking about it retrospectively, 
well, give me the goosebumps a bit because so many times, like my data could have been stolen, and uh, I would be, I wouldn't know about it. So basically, in this presentation, we're going to see like a possible solution that is like this nice link over there, and uh, here it's sketched. So let me let me tell you again, these are uh, preliminary results based on some research of mine. So this is not uh, this, this is not a product, so don't get. <laughs> Don't, don't fear anything, it's just like some, some food for thought, I would say. So, um, while I was researching for a possible solution, I thought like, what is nice to have? And obviously the in clear answer is, I would like to have something privileged, for the very same reason that I told you. I would be like to be, I would be like to have a possibility to use the software as soon as I have to use like a computer. That means like internet cafes, the laptop of a friend of mine, and so on. Should be reliable as always, otherwise like there is no point. I mean like I can't actually have a solution that works fifty percent of the time. That's I mean like it's like I it's better flipping a coin, right? And portable. Portable because you don't know which Windows you are using, which we version of it, which patch <coughs> level. So let's cut to the chase. I want a solution that works everywhere. Multi platform I would say. So um the idea behind it is really simple, so simple that you say like, yeah, it's kind of stupid, right? But most of the time, like stupid ideas are those that are able like to bring us to the very end like of a task. And this idea is that like a keylogger is bound to our activity, right? I mean, like a keylogger is a software logging our activity. Therefore, if we don't do anything, the keylogger is not doing anything as a consequence. There is nothing to log. But if I'm typing, if I'm writing, then I expect like few programs to behave like the keylogger, like my activity itself. The keylogger, because it needs to log the activity, and the application that is supposed to receive that input, right? So the, 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 the idea is simple. The key, a keylogger is a program that behaves like the user without being allowed to. So for instance, again, I would uh, expect Word, for instance, if I'm writing a letter, to behave <coughs> like I do. So more activity, more CPU activity, more AU activity if I type. Whereas like I don't expect like a program in the background to do that, right? Because why why is it storing? Why is it like reading like what I'm doing? So yeah, the idea is to um, correlate to two things. The number of keystrokes that I the, that I digit and the most correct way to say it like the pattern and uh, the number of bytes the keylogger produces in output. The idea is that like a keylogger by definition wants to log stuff somewhere. It needs to, right? If he wants like to send it to some other people like around. And he has to do that while I type it. So if I just can monitor a system for a, for a while and check like whether this a keylogger like is doing exactly this, then I know that that keylogger is a keylogger. Sorry, I meant that that software, that piece of software is actually a keylogger. So let me go like a bit more formal, not too much, just to repeat like this concept because this is like the pivotal point onto which we'll, uh, I'm building this talk. So the general, the, the, the strategy here is like to analyze every process. A process is like is a program executing on your computer. And uh, for each of these processes, I just simulate some activity, some special activity. Imagine like, me writing something really fast and with, and with a specific pattern. That means I write in the first seconds I write a lot, then I write a bit less, then a lot again. And what I do at the same time, I just monitor the activity of, this, of all these processes, of these programs. And if I see a program that is behaving exactly like that, that means writing of a hard drive, at the beginning a lot, then nothing, then at the end a lot again, I say that this program is a keylogger. So see, like the idea is really simple really stu stupid, I might say, but uh, we will see that actually like, is quite effective. So let's go into the details and let me show you why it's not that trivial as it sounds. So what did I do to test the idea? Well, I said, okay, it's perfect. What you do, I just like, this is like a keylogger that I wrote just to test my idea and everything. So I started with, I've started with creating with the, with the most naive, version of my idea. I just monitor the activity. So I just see, um, I just type a lot and check whether um, a program is behaving like, uh, is exhibiting like a lot of activity. And I'll just use this correlation like to 
state that the program is a clogger indeed. So here it's a little test, and I say like successful, I was typing a lot, and the keylogger was showing a lot of, of IO activity. That means that the keylogger was, as the name says, was logging all my keystrokes on the hard drive while I was typing, which is awesome. I mean, like, looks like that actually our idea was, uh, uh, was meaningful and was uh, proved to be correct. Well, it wasn't that easy because unfortunately, as you may know, <laughs> you have many programs on your computer which are slow, they do a lot of activities. I don't know if you know, you use Firefox. And Firefox is awesome, but after 20 tabs or 30, it gets like slow, it gets slow. That, that's because like he writes on the hard drive. And I'm exactly the thing that I noticed. So even Firefox, if I, if, I, if I type, like writes a lot, which is not really nice, because like it really behaves like similarly. So what I thought of doing is something more complex. I'm sorry, like looks complex, but it's really easy. As I told you before, instead like of typing a lot, I just like, is there a laser pointer? Fantastic. Okay, I just type a lot, then I type enough, nothing, then a lot again, and so on, so on, like a sinusoid, a sinusoidal-like approach. And here, I monitor all processes, and I just cor correlate, which is like a nice way to see <coughs> that you compare the two, um, the, two the two distributions. This is essential, unfortunately. I know that it sounds like complex and everything, but this was essential if you wanted like, to avoid any false positives. Why that? Because we want to avoid, like, there is in um, malware, in the malware industry, there is nothing worse than a false positive. You don't want, like, to flag something as bad when it's not. I mean, like, I think that you know perfectly, like, because we, they go, like, on the news immediately. Um, this product detected the TCP, TCP IP driver as malicious, therefore, like, all connections were just, like, uh, um, disabled because like of this uh, antivirus update. That was a false positive, we want to avoid that. So that's, that's the reason why I did some research and tried like, to come up with an approach that was as robust as possible. So um, what is nice about this approach that is monitoring the input and the output is that like it's really easy to do it on Windows. This is just an image that is about your task manager. If you open it, and you go like to the, this is Windows 8, yes? And if you go like to the performance tab, you can see that all this information is being tracked. So it's like, it's there for, f it's there for free. So it's really easy to use it. So we just use that very sim in, in, in information to build this. This is the idea on paper. This is actually what I built uh, and the architecture of the solution that is able like, to detect keyloggers, the one that I told you at the very beginning. So it's really simple. I mean, like, uh, there are many components just because when you want to write a paper about it, like, it's useful like, to divide the idea in many steps. But it's really simple. What I do is I generate like, a pattern, which is like the thing over here that we were talking about. I generate it. <coughs> And in a way, I want it to be like random. Why that? Because I don't want, to, uh, I don't want it to look like uh, a legitimate pattern in output. And what I do, I generate the pattern, I'll give it like, a component which takes care like, of doing the, the analysis. And the operating system itself uh, will tell me like, all the input output, which is exactly this part here. So uh, we'll uh, reach like this component, which just compares the pattern that I generated in input with all the input-output patterns of all the processes. And if there's anyone, any, if, and if there is anyone which uh, is similar to one of those, and I say that there is a, kilo, a kilogger in the system. So okay, sorry for the math. You're not supposed to read it. You're not supposed to understand it. And next time, like uh, for the final version of the slide, I'm going to delete this. But uh, the reason why it was useful to say to show it is that to show you that actually mathematics sometimes is useful. I mean, like, um, in this case, uh, I found this metric, uh, which, which is a statistical metric used like, to compare patterns and everything, which was godsend, really, because uh, it has some nice property which allows me to have an approach that is even more robust because uh, it's, um, it has some nice property. For instance, it's invariant to some transformation of the input. So, the reason is, I have a keylogger. The keylogger obviously like, might, might encrypt the data, right? So 
might actually add uh, some more information about the keystrokes, for instance, the application being used and everything. Might then ignore some specific keystrokes. Might do a lot of things. So most of the time, like a straightforward technique, uh, aiming to compare these two input-output patterns, these two patterns, sorry, would be actually thwarted by this kind of keyloggers. But uh, mathematics to the rescue, this technique was able, like, is able like, to absorb that kind of transformation as long as they're linear. Linear means it's just like um, I apply the very same transformation all the time. If I do that, then the technique is resilient to those uh, uh, evision, evision techniques. So uh, for this test, I just, uh, what did I do? Because you, every time that you want to validate like your technique or your idea, it's nice that you, if you can get like some samples from an authoritative source. So there is like a really nice website, www.keylogger.org, which lists like a lot of keyloggers, not just <coughs> malware, but also like legitimate monitoring software. And I just tested them all. And uh, yeah, it was, it was nice because uh, I was detecting them all, but obviously like some more research like would be useful for to make like the approach even more robust. But the, this was like a nice starting point. So the conclusions are sketched over here. Mm, I hope that you didn't get bored or that you followed me like till the very end. The idea was nice like to think of a uh, detection approach, a detection technique that was a bit out of the box. You know, not always about uh, signatures, not always about like complex system watching thingies, but something simple, easy, and functional. We tested it against uh, real keyloggers and everything, so we are confident that actually something that works is still in the research phase, obviously, as I told you. Um, I didn't tell you the whole story because otherwise this talk would have become something like a lecture. So I skipped, for instance, some uh, uh, additional things uh, like uh, what if a logger is just storing things in memory because I didn't want like to spend time there. There are some uh, some caveats, but uh, they were not important for this presentation. And that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for your time. Uh